What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. So, today's video is going to be like a little personal or whatever. I'm getting a little personal. Um, or should I say personable? Because I want to talk to y'all about like mental health, mental health awareness, um, my journey, and like what I've been through and where I'm at now. And I was like kind of thinking about some stuff and I'm like, you know what? I kind of got some gems. I kind of got some gems I need to drop. Okay. So I was like, why not make a, um, a YouTube video about it? Because you never know who like needs to hear it. Who needs to know, like who needs to understand that you've been through it. Somebody might need it. Somebody just might need it. So, um, I decided to make a YouTube, a YouTube video about it. So I can help somebody else out there who's going through something. Let's start off by saying that I am in therapy. I go to therapy once a week. I talk to a therapist. Um, it's called talk therapy. And so far, so fucking good, okay? Um, I feel much better, like, within myself. Um, what I started seeking therapy for was anxiety. Um, when I was younger... When I was like 15, I think I had like my first panic attack. And I don't know. It was like, it kind of was like little episodes of like, like I feel like I couldn't breathe out of nowhere. And I'm just like, ooh, like, dang. Now it's feeling like, it's like it's it's hard for me to breathe. You know, like out of nowhere, it was just happening. Like, you know, my chest feeling tight and it's feeling like, you know, it's feeling like heavy. Like it's it's hard for me to breathe in. It's like, you know how, uh, this, this is what I describe it as. You know how like, when you breathe, it's basically involuntary. You're just breathing, like, it's just happening. But the way I was feeling, it was feeling like it wasn't involuntary. Like, I had to literally take a breath in and take the the breath out, like, to make sure I was breathing. So, anyways, I was in the car with my dad this one day, and we was passing the hospital. And I think that this made it, like, ten times worse. When I saw the hospital, I was already feeling like I couldn't breathe. When I saw the hospital, it made me, like, just panic more because I'm like... If I'm in my head, I'm thinking like, well, if I can't breathe and like something really is wrong, now is the time to say it because you by the hospital, so get it out. So I just bust out like, Dad, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Then once I start saying it, like it made me can't breathe thirty times more. So I honestly thought I was having an asthma attack. I don't even have asthma, but I felt like I was having an asthma attack. So I was, I just got a, I mean, I was in the car, so I was in the back seat, and I was like, Dad, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Like I just started saying that. He put, he turned the corner, went to the hospital. We got out, we ran in, ran into the emergency. The lady um put like the little oxygen thing on my finger, and uh she was telling me like to trying to tell me to calm down, and then uh, they did the the blood pressure, and then like two three minutes later they was like, oh, okay, like you're fine, uh, there's nothing wrong with you, you just had a panic attack, and then I was like, a panic attack. And she's like, yeah, and I'm like, no, I really can't breathe. And she was like, no, it's just your mind telling you that you can't breathe, but you really can. But, you know, basically your mind is strong enough to trick you if you let it. So I was like, oh. So then I just feel hella dumb. I'm just like, okay. So she started telling me, like, basically a, um, a way to work on it is just to think that you can breathe when you're not, when you feeling like you can't. So that's easier said than done, of course, um, because when I got home, like, it still was like a lot of episodes where I felt like I couldn't breathe a lot. So I'll just go out to the back porch and I'll just sit on the um on the steps in the backyard and then I'll just sit there and I'll just keep thinking like you could breathe and I'll kind of like open my mouth sometimes and just be like, Sean, relax, like telling myself in my head, like relax, relax. So that kind of like was like a little phase in my life because it kind of like came and went. As I got older, they kind of subsided. So I didn't have no problems with panic attacks for a while. I guess I'll just tell y'all the actual story, the backstory of it happening. I don't know. It's hard to explain because it's a lot, lot like history, you know, behind why I feel the way I feel about certain stuff. So basically, um, I'm just going to try to sum it up. I was going on a cruise and I had told my dad and I was excited about going on a cruise. I wasn't having panic attacks. I was feeling fine. Wasn't feeling like no anxiety. I was just feeling fine. I was feeling regular, like, you know, like a normal person would be feeling. So I was happy about going on a cruise. Um, I was telling my dad about going on a cruise. My dad acted like he was happy for me. But the day before the cruise, he was like, actually, I don't want you going on a cruise because you're going to be too far and if something happened. And he's worrisome. My dad is worrisome, okay? So he was like, um, the day before the cruise, he was like, actually, 
I don't want you going on a cruise, whatever. You shouldn't go. Oh, I'm not going to be there. Um, I don't know what could happen. And you're going to be in the middle of the water. Just everything negative that could happen. He was mentioning to me and saying, like, why I shouldn't go. So, I still end up going because I'm like, no, we already paid for the tickets. Like, I'm happy. Y'all didn't pack my bags. Like, why would I not go because you're scared? Like, no. So, um, I still went. Mind you, we had to drive out to L.A. Um, to get on the boat. Got on the boat. We went to Mexico. Um, I did. What? I did have fun. Like I had fun on the whole time there on the trip. Um, of course I was just being like extra careful and like extra cautious about everything because I don't want like what my dad said to come true. And then it's like, well, you should have listened or like I told you so and stuff like that. So like I was being careful, but it was like I guess that was like in the back of my mind like the whole time like. Just trying to be, like, extra careful to make sure nothing happens. Like, watch your surroundings. Watch your drink. Watch just everything he was saying. Just going on in the back of my mind, right? So, granted, I did have fun. Um, I did get drunk, like, each night. You know, I had a good time. So, um, after the trip on the way back, when we was coming back from L.A., the whole car ride, I had, like, butterflies in my stomach. And, like, like a lot. Like, I felt, like, on edge. Like, feeling like something was going to happen, you know? So, I was like, damn, I wonder, like, why do I keep feeling like this? But I didn't tell nobody in the car or whatever. I was just trying to ride it out. And I, I was just hoping that it, would, that it would go away. So, the whole ride back, the whole six-hour drive back from L.A., I had butterflies in my stomach. Couldn't go to sleep. Really couldn't eat. Really couldn't drink. Like, it was just making me feel like something about to happen. So, we get back. We, I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's because I've been away from the kids for a couple of days. Make sure that they're okay. Maybe it was just me being worried about them. So, when we get back home, we get back to the kids, I still got that butterfly feeling. So, I'm like, okay, now it was, like, kind of tripping me out. Like, why do I still have this butterfly feeling? But, whatever. So, I start noticing more and more, like, when I get in the car, I would have this butterfly feeling in my stomach. Like, something bad is about to happen. So, it started getting to the point where, like, every time I would get in the car with somebody, I would have butterflies in my stomach. So, I'm like, okay, what is this feeling like? I keep feeling like something bad is about to happen, but I don't. Like, nothing bad is happening, and, like, I don't know why. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know why I'm feeling like this. Progressively, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. So, it got to the point where, like, I start being, like, scared to ride with people in the car. Like, I I don't want to get in a car with nobody because I'm starting, I have that butterfly feeling. And it just makes me feel, like, on edge the whole time. And then it's like... I'm trying not to let the person that's driving or let the people that I'm riding with know that, like, I'm feeling all, you know, butterflies in my stomach. Because I don't even know why. So, it's kind of hard for me to explain. So, it's hard for me to tell somebody. Because if they ask me why, I don't know why. I don't know. It's just happening. I don't know. So, a year goes by. I've still been having these feelings. Basically, from the day that we came back from the cruise, which is in March of 2018. I've been having these, these butterfly feelings in my stomach every time I get in the car with somebody. Now it's March of 2019. I've still been having these feelings every time I get in a car with somebody. So at this at this point, it's becoming stressful. The last time I had gotten in a car with my dad, I got in a car with my dad. Okay, well, no. Let me tell you the story. So I was riding with my sister. No, I was driving. So I don't have the butterflies when I drive, but when somebody else drives, I have the feeling, like the butterfly feeling, the scary feeling, like something about to happen. So my sister and I was going like to Walmart and like kind of running errands and stuff. And... I don't know. I just kept it was it, it was a it was a lot going on. So I always have the butterfly feelings, but on top of that, like I I also just like started not feeling like myself. Like I just started feeling like I'm off a little bit, like I'm crazy or like I don't know. I just started like not feeling like myself. I just started feeling like not not like I'm sad and depressed. It wasn't that type of feeling. It was just more like a a lost feeling. I just started feeling lost, like as if I had like uh, Alzheimer's or something. Like I was just feeling lost. Like I'd be like. Okay, like, I don't know. I just, I don't know how to explain it. I just started having a lost feeling and I wasn't feeling like myself. With me feeling like that, on top of me having anxiety and, like, being scared when I ride with people in the car, like, I, I don't know. I just start, I feel like I just started losing myself. On top of me having the kids, mind you, I'm still doing my day-to-day, -day, you know, routine. I got to take care of my kids. I'm, you know, I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. I'm washing clothes. I'm taking them to school. I'm going to work. Like, I still was doing all my daily activities and all my daily things that I've been doing but it was just like I just wasn't feeling like myself still like in the midst of all of this I just still wasn't feeling like myself I was right I was driving I was with my sister we was going to run errands I was in my dad rental car he I had a rental car I was in the, my dad rental car so me and my sister we was at Safeway at the time we was about to go to Walmart 
So my dad called and was like, oh, where y'all at? I'm like, we at Safeway, whatever, whatever. He like, oh, okay, well, since y'all already on the east, because we, we was already close to the part, the place where he uh, rented the rental car. So he's like, since y'all already close like, to the rental car place, let's take that rental car back now. Mind you, it wasn't even due yet. So he just wanted to take it back early because we wasn't, it wasn't no need of us having it no more or whatever. So he was like, oh, yeah, since you over there close to, like, to the rental car place, let's go drop the rental car off. I'll meet y'all over there. I'll come back and pick y'all up, like, now. Now my stomach's on 10. Got butterflies all in my stomach. Mind you, don't nobody know what I'm going through. Like, nobody knows that I got butterflies in my stomach when I ride with people. Nobody knows nothing. I didn't tell tell it to nobody. So, um, I'm acting, you know, national. Like, okay, cool. I'm about to come bring the car. Da, da, da. But in my head, I'm just like, like, what the fuck? So, I go take the car back, the rental car back. And he meet us there. My dad, me, me and Shayla there, me and my sister. So... Now, like, I'm, you know, I'm already, like, ramped up because I know I got to get in the car to ride back home with him, you know? And I don't want to do that. So, we he gets to the rental car place. I get in the car. And the whole time I'm in the car, I'm telling myself, like, Sean, calm down. Sean, relax. Like, relax. We about to be at home. We finna get on the freeway. Like, relax, relax. This is what I'm just trying to tell myself to calm myself down because I'm already, like, I got butterflies. And I'm just feeling, like, anxious. And I'm just like, fuck. So, the whole car ride back, I'm trying to calm myself down. We on the freeway. And I don't know where, like my chest started feeling like it's caving in so i'm thinking like okay this is a panic attack like i'm probably i'm about to start having a panic attack but i don't want to tell nobody because i don't want them to panic or them to be scared or them to be worried about me or them to try to rush me to the hospital and you know it's like it, it that's too much so i'm just trying to hide it so i'm sitting in the car or whatever and we on the freeway my chest starting to feel hella tight and like i'm like taking deep breaths but i'm trying to look out the window and i just roll the window down i'm trying to get air i'm looking around whatever whatever then my sister she in the back so then the school called her for her son saying that he broke out from eating something and his face is broken out with bumps so we need to come get him so now i'm fucking on 100 because i'm trying to go home because like my safe place is home like when i'm home i know i'm good like you know um but i was i was mad basically i was in my head i'm like oh my god like fuck now we gotta go get him like that's another fucking stop we gotta make and like i'm already on 10 like this is bad so i'm on 10 or whatever so we go get him we go get him from his school. Mind you, the school not far away from our house, but it's just like another stop we got to make that I didn't want to make, that I didn't want to be in the car no more. I want to get out this car. We go get him. When we pull over to go get him, I open the door and get out. Like my dad parked, whatever. I opened the door, I got out because I need some air. I need the air. I need to get out. So I got out, but I was just acting nonchalant with my dad. I'm just like, who? Like I was kind of hiding that car, da, 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 you know, trying to play it off. So my sister come out with uh, her son and then we all get in the car because we about to go back home. But no, we don't go back home. My dad take like this long way. Instead of going back home, he just starting to ride around the streets and, you know, trying to go get food and like, bruh, no. So I was like, I'm in the side panicking, like on the side, like lightweight dying. It felt like to me. So um, when he finally take us home, like I hurry up and get out. I run upstairs, like in the house. And I start and I just sat down and I just start taking deep breaths. Like I'm trying to relax because like I didn't work myself up so hard, like. So I'm just trying to relax. So basically from that day, um, I went downstairs and I had talked to my grandma. And I'm like, yeah, I got to say something. And she was like, what? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I ain't been feeling like myself. Like, I've been feeling weird. Like, I've been having these, you know, low-key panic attacks, whatever, when I'm riding with people. Um, I'm not comfortable, like, riding with people no more. I don't know what it is, but I just don't feel right when I get in the car with people. So basically I, like, confide in her. And I'm like, yeah, I just don't feel right. Like, I ain't even feel like myself. Mind you, I'm crying while I'm telling her because, like, it's hard for me to even say it. First of all, because when I talk about it, it was just making me like, it makes me feel like that. Like when I talk about panic attacks, it, when I used to talk about panic attacks, it makes me start feeling like I'm having a panic attack. When I talk about anxiety, it started making me get butterflies in my stomach. Like, you know, so I was scared to talk to her about it, but um, I just start talking to her about it. So I'm crying while I'm talking, but I'm trying to just get it out because like nobody knows. And it's just like eating me up. I've been like dealing with it for like over a year um, by myself, like not telling nobody, like trying to hide it. It's just bad. So I told my grandma about it, and then she was just like, well, maybe you should seek therapy. Like, maybe you should talk to a therapist. And I was like, a therapist? No, I don't need a therapist. Like, that's weird. People going to think I'm crazy, or that's where crazy people go, da-da-da. So she was like, uh, no, that's where you go if you need help. You could talk to somebody about it, you know, somebody that understands you. So I'm like, okay, in my head, like, what, what do I got to lose at this point? Because, like, I'm already feeling fucking crazy and, like, not. I'm already feeling not like myself feeling super anxious like every day just living like that it's just like it's just stressing me to fuck out okay so i was like let me i'm just gonna reach out and see so i had made a doctor appointment with my doctor and then when i got in the doctor i told her like that nothing really was wrong with me but i wanted to talk to a therapist 
So then that's when she gave me like a referral. She gave me a paper. So um, I called the numbers on the paper and then nobody answered. So I just left messages and then I'm just like, okay, hopefully somebody get back to me. So I think I called like four or five places. I left messages and then the first one that called me back like three days later, that was like, oh, I'm reaching out to you for an appointment. Did you call about an appointment? And I'm like, yep, sure did. When When is the soonest can I come? Like I need it now. Da, da, da. So finally I go into um, the office, whatever. And at this point, I mean, I'm looking for help shit, at this point. Like, I go in and the first thing the lady told me like, um, um at, at our first session so i'm sitting there and she like okay well like today we're not we we're not like basically gonna do any therapy today we are going to like get your file together i need to know your name um you know your background your occupation and i'm like uh no i came here because i've been feeling anxious i just start telling her, i just start going off like and i'm like and i don't want to take no medicine i don't want this not so yeah i'll start going in because like no i came here for help like you could get all that shit later i need to talk to you okay she let me like kind of express myself and I just instantly felt like she understood me like you know like she literally understands like how the brain works and why I'm feeling like this. well she don't know why like uh she understands the emotions that I'm feeling like the the butterflies in my stomach because it's like you know when you talk to people about it um it's like they don't really I guess like fully understand if they didn't go through it or if they're not going through it I feel like they don't like truly understand you know like deep down understand the feelings of it that's like a little backstory about my journey and like how I talk to a therapist and like why I talk to a therapist. So I started talking to my therapist. So now I talk to her like once a week, um, an hour out of one day out of a week. Like, what is that? Uh, it's nothing like to incorporate that into your schedule. I'm saying for somebody who is not feeling like, you know, you're not feeling like yourself. You're not feeling right. You're not feeling, you know, happy. People are depressed. Some people have anxiety. Um, some people have panic attacks. Some people don't have no reason that they have it. Like, it's just a lot of stuff. Um, I want to, like, come on and, like, mention therapy and mention, like, kind of, like, normalize or, like, destigmatize therapy and, like, your mental health. Like, it's so important to keep your mental health in check. Like, you're not feeling like yourself. If you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling just, like, not yourself postpartum um if you feeling bipolar if you're feeling anything i feel like any type of mental health that you're feeling that sh that's hard for you to deal with on your own i feel like therapy will be super effective i just do talk therapy so that's just when i sit down and i just talk to a therapist kind of like just getting out what i feel basically i get out what i feel and then she just give me ways to cope with how i feel like healthy ways to cope with my anxiety but i'm saying for people that go that want to reach out for therapy that's basically what therapy is it's basically finding healthy ways to cope with the way you're feeling also by expressing yourself to somebody that truly understands you i feel like that makes a huge difference like okay you got your best friend or you got your sister and you got your family members but people that are like that study the brain knows how the brain works and like understands the feelings that you're feeling like you could you feel a different feeling and you feel like a weight lifted off your shoulders talking to somebody who truly understands you and also gives you ways to like cope with how you feeling or deal with how you feeling because don't have it don't have to be like everything is not like permanent it does not have to be permanent but i feel like the longer you put it off the worse it end up getting it's different types of therapy so i do talk therapy but there's like uh like hypnotized I don't know what it's called, but like when you get hypnotized and then she was trying to, she was asking me that I want to do that. And at first and I'm like, no, cause girl, I was scared what I might say. Like, I don't know what the fuck I might say. And I'm scared that I won't wake up. Like, I don't know. I'm scary. So I was already scared to do therapy in the first place, but, um, but yeah, I didn't, I don't do nothing besides just talk therapy, but it's different types of ther therapy for different people. Like start off by at least going to therapy so you can see what works best for you. But yeah guys like i truly recommend going to therapy i truly recommend like getting your mental health back manageable and getting it back like to where you feel good like you're doing it for yourself like we barely do things for ourselves especially like things that has to do with mental health i don't know it's like stigmatized as like you're crazy or some bad thing or you know or something must be wrong with you but like we're people we all people we all go through stuff um everybody deals with stuff differently some a lot of people smoke a lot of people drink um like to cope with how they feel but honestly that's just pushing the feelings away for the time being 
Like, once you get back sober, you're still going to feel the way that you was feeling that you're trying to run from. I'm not the type of person that like to, like, run from my feelings. Like, I like to, like, face my fears. I kind of, I, I, I want to know why. I was just like, I need to go because I want to know why. Like, why the fuck am I feeling like this? Like, what the fuck happened? Like, what's wrong with me? Or, you know, like, kind of get down to the bottom of it. I'm more of that type of person. I don't really want to run from it and be like, well, I'm just going to drink every day. Like, I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't like depending on other stuff to like make me feel better so that was like one of the main reasons why i went to therapy too like i need to know why so if this is gonna help me get down to the bottom of this and and give me the answer that i need then i need to do this but that that's actually a good thing talking to somebody that you don't know she don't have no judgment she don't know you she don't know the situation she don't know your background don't know nothing from nothing unless you tell her and then what you tell her is like confidential and it's not to be used against you you know it's just more of like to understand where you're coming from or like your background or why do you think the way that you do or the do the things that you do it's like my number one thing that i really really like about it it's not judgmental and it's like an outsider looking in so like she has a whole different perspective it's not your cousin or your sister that's telling you you know that you're doing wrong also they listen to like they listen to like deeply respond not to just listen to just be like oh yeah okay yep all right yeah i got it's like they listen and they like understanding where you're coming from like you know it's like a deep listen like like attentive listening i guess is what it would be called but yeah guys i truly recommend it um everybody go through things like i feel like you do not put yourself down do not um like try to belittle your situation do not compare your situation um to somebody else you know or like well she she got anxiety too she fine like you don't know what they think you don't know how they feeling um also another big thing do not try to hide it like the biggest thing for me was like trying to hide it like do not try to hide it like confide in somebody confide in somebody even if it's not therapy right now but like confide in somebody like let somebody know because i feel like the more you hide it like the more it's like you feeding it and it's like becoming a bigger issue in your head and a bigger problem within yourself if you could like just you know say whatever is comfortable enough for you to say to somebody but do not try to hide it like now when i'm feeling like well i, I didn't got so much better like i'm able to talk about it without even like crying or feeling like no type of like uh hurt emotion about it i guess hiding it it was just like making it like that was just like one of the big things for me that was making it super super worse like and i didn't even you know i never noticed that that was that that was feeding it because to me it was just like i feel like it was it was helping me you know because i don't want nobody else around me to worry or to be you know seeing me in a different light like oh well you know she's weak or she's a she's a cry baby or she can't go because her anxiety gonna mess with her like no so for like now um if i'm feeling anxious in a car with somebody or if i'm feeling anxious like about doing something or just like if i'm just not feeling like myself that day um like i tell people like if i'm in the car and i'm feeling anxious i'm like who like who i'm starting to feel anxious now like i'm trying to get butterflies in myself like i gotta i gotta say it like i need to tell you that way i'm not trying to hide it because when i'm hiding it then i'm feeding it and then i'm gonna start feeling more anxious and then you're never gonna know but i'm gonna be over here having a low-key panic attack when i could have just said it out loud and got it off my chest got it out in the air let it go so yeah these are ways like why therapy is effective for me these are ways that um i feel like therapy could be effective for you so thank you guys so much for watching this video thank you guys for letting me be kind of like vulnerable and open with you guys and i hope that i can help somebody out there um that's the main purpose of this video i just want to get to somebody or many people you know that well, been thinking about therapy or that been thinking like oh my mental health ain't been right and i don't know what's going on and maybe i should but maybe i shouldn't like i hope i help you guys make your decision your final decision help yourself i'll see you guys in my next freaking video